All right, folks, it's time for video two from My Pretty Pony, or MPP as you guys can call me. And you might be wondering what rice, eggs, random soy sauce that we kept from a stir fry pack, some true story organic sriracha jalapeno chicken sausage. That sounds really good. <laughs> that beautiful head of cauliflower that we got out of that Imperfect Foods box. This came from an earlier Imperfect Foods box. I have some carrots that my kids' daycare has sent home because they have an overabundance of them, and onions. And this is all going to turn into a breakfast stir fry, and you're going to see how in just a minute. So the first thing you want is to dice up your onions, and you want them, what would you say those are? Medium chunks? Small. Small chunks? Okay. Small dice. Small diced chunks. Remember, folks, there's no reason to get emotional and cry. It's just an onion. So the next thing you want to do is you want to matchstick the carrots. And there is a purpose for matchsticking, isn't there? Yeah, it makes them thinner so that they cut more e or they cook more evenly. And uh, you don't have to cook them as long. So by the time the onion's done, the, the carrots will be done about the same time. So you're cooking the uh, harder root with the softer onion and they'll all finish at the same time even though they generally have different cooking times. Yeah, different densities. So while those carrots are being chopped up, we're gonna get the rice going because you want the rice to be done um, at the same time, or roughly the same time everything else is. This is the cup that came with my little rice cooker. And so this is um, a white jasmine rice that we're using. You can use any rice that you want. Remember that brown rice takes more water and longer to cook. So it's going to be one cup of rice, and then we're going to fill this twice with water, put it in there, and then the great thing about rice cookers, you turn it on and you walk away. So the next thing that happens is now that the onions are cut and the carrots are matchsticked, is that cauliflower is going to get cut up. Are we going to use the whole cauliflower or about like half of it? Uh, maybe quarter, half. Quarter. quarter to a half? Okay, so we'll have cauliflower left over for another... Uh, recipe yeah. and you're just taking all of the rest of what basically would have been um the plant that it was cut off of off right. and i'm gonna cut them off as florets instead of just cutting the whole thing in pieces like most people do so what you do is you can literally just take your knife in there whoa that was a really big chunk and that's a floret uh Technically, that's a floret. This is like a bulb or I don't know what to call that. Hold that down a little more. <laughs> so, like, that's a floret. That's just... That's a bunch of florets. <laughs> <laughs> like a small bulb. And what about, like, the brown on the cauliflower? That doesn't affect it at all, right? It's just where no. it's gotten a little um, too aerated. Or bruised, yeah. But if you if it really bothers you, you can just take it and slice the tip of it off. It's not a problem. So, pretty good. Yeah, yeah you, just, you can move. Nice. Right so, so now that you've cut the chunks off the cauliflower that you want. Yep. Move that out of the way. We'll put that back in the fridge and save the other part of it for another recipe. And then this, you're just going to slice? Yeah, so cauliflower is a tougher vegetable, similar to carrots. I want it to cook quickly. Uh, you are going to have a lot of the little pieces that come off, but as you can see, it makes for a really nice little... Ha! Break. That's nice. You understand why the Japanese uh, like to make pictures out of their food? <laughs> which I think is one of the greatest things that they do in that culture is their philosophy is you eat with your eyes first. And so they want it to be visually appealing as well as uh, smell good and taste good. Right. So the next thing that happens is the sausages are going to get cut and you're cutting those on a diagonal. Yeah. It makes them really thin. It makes it so that even though it's a little tiny, if you look from the side, really tiny piece of meat, mm -hmm. it looks like more. So even though it's a, like, I could do it as a cube, and it'll look bigger this way, but it's going to be a lot, it's going to be the same amount of meat. Okay. So you're just visually tricking the eye with the way you're slicing meat. Yeah. Yeah. It makes a little bit go a long ways, and 
when you look at a dish and you see, oh, it's got a little bit of cube, or you can look at a dish and go, there's a whole lot of meat I can see right there. And it's because of the big flat spots. Okay. And you'll see that with uh, a lot of all, all over cooking fish, especially, uh, they really try to emphasize uh, how much fish you're getting. But if you look at it, they cut it a certain way specifically to provide you the least amount of fish, but make it look much larger tricks of the restaurant industry so that thirty dollar fish meal you're eating is really only probably cost them five five bucks in fish and <laughs> eight bucks in vegetables yeah. <laughs> and can you explain why you don't have to wipe the board off when you're doing the meats and the veggies all at once uh well so these meats are all pre-cooked um so you don't have to worry about it being um like cross-contamination too much um yes it is a protein uh, but when you're going from a vegetable to a protein, you don't have to worry about the cross-contamination towards the proteins. You do if you go from the meats over to vegetables. But when I'm going to be cooking it here in the next, in like five minutes, I really don't need to stress over cross-contamination because it's all going to the same pot and it's all going to cook. So basics of cross-contamination are number one, if you chop up your veggies or fruits before you cut up your meat, you don't have to worry about the cross-contamination because the veggies will not contaminate your meat. If the meat is already a pre-cooked one, like this is a sausage um, that's already been cooked once, then you don't have to worry about cross-contamination. And then because it's all going into the same pot, you can't cross-contaminate it because it's all going to cook together. Is that right? Basically, yeah. So the next thing that happens is we're going to start the pan heating and this pan is dry. I can touch it right now because it's not hot. Um, and we're going to set it to what? Like medium heat? Medium. Medium. Medium high somewhere in there. So for mine, that would be about a six. And we're going to let that start heating up before we ever put anything else in the pan. Notice and the no oil. The no oil, no oil, no water, no nothing. And there's a science behind that, right? Yeah. So the pan will uh, come to temperature, but the oil will burn before the pan is at the proper temperature. So what you do is you wait till the pan is hot. See, I can still touch it, it's cold. I put my oil in here, the oil will start to burn and will even catch fire before the pan is at the proper temperature. So you have to, to get it to proper temperature, you get the pan hot, then add the oil. And then when you do that, the oil will not burn when you go to put, say, your onions or other ingredients in. You'll get that famous hiss sound. And that's because of the water hitting the oil, or the water in the vegetables hitting the oil of the pan, in the pan. So there is a science behind heating up your pans dry. So we're working with uh, Chosen Foods avocado oil. Avocado oil is um, largely the only oil I work with in my kitchen. Number one, it's got a super mild flavor, um, so you can actually taste whatever you're cooking as opposed to tasting the oil. And then it's got a high heat point, 500 degrees, um, which is the point at which it will start to smoke, which is the point at which it starts to burn. And so that being the case means that this is good for everything from cooking on your stove to baking to even putting out on the grill. It works fantastic for everything. Deep and frying. Deep fat frying as well, yes, except peanut oil is the other oil that I keep in my kitchen regularly because it's best for deep fat frying, so long as you are not allergic to peanuts, of course. <laughs> and it has a fantastic flavor. And this is going to go in the pan, now that the pan has started to warm up, and you can see... I can feel it for about here. So, which is, I don't know, two fingers up, so... And that's where you can see, you can feel the heat starting to rise. Right. And so that's how you know that your oil, or your pan is ready um, for the oil. Just enough to coat the bottom because I'm going to be adding a lot of ingredients. It's going to coat everything that's in there. If you, So don't add too much or it'll become greasy. But you see, it's just enough that it'll coat everything. And you can see uh, because right of there the... there that it smoked a little bit. I don't know if you can see yep. that. That's because of the vegetables not being put in yet. And I'm going to start with a little bit of garlic and ginger. So we're actually going to put um, some herbs in here first, or spices. Whoops. There's that famous hiss you were speaking of. Yep. 
and that was just pre um, pre minced garlic that I buy at the grocery store because I and ginger. And it's definitely hot. <laughs> so the order matters a little bit too, right? Like it's onions first because of their water content. Is that correct? Uh, pretty much the vegetables just I'm going to be putting in together all at the same time because I cut them all to be about the uh, thinner for the thicker items and for the denser items. So in with the onions, in goes the cauliflower. And then in goes the carrots. Yeah. Now normally you want to start with your uh, meat if it's raw. If you if, if you're working with like hamburger or pork sausage, whatever, just whatever raw, start with that. So you would start with raw meat, but because our meat is already pre-cooked, we're starting with the vegetables because they need to cook. Yeah. Right? And, yeah. And then the pre-cooked sausage, all we're doing is just heating it up. We don't need to cook it. And you can hear that hissing and sizzling kind of slowing down as you're stirring. That's because everything's starting to release the water that it has. Yeah, it's the cold temperature of the food cooling off the bottom of the pan, preventing the water and the oil from splashing against each other. Okay. So we're going to stir this and get this cooked, and then we'll start adding the rest of our ingredients to some of them. So everything is mostly soft because we also put a lid on it and uh, let it kind of steam across the top, yeah. but it's coming up to where you want it. That way we can pull it off. Yeah. Yep. And so we're going to add um, the sausage first, is that right? Yeah. So all of that sriracha jalapeno sausage, which we did try a couple bites of this. Um, and it has a really good flavor. It's not super spicy. It's got a really good jalapeno flavor and a really good sriracha flavor to it. And it doesn't um, burn the crap out of your mouth. So, no, heat. <laughs> no, no, really no heat at all, which is nice. If you're someone that likes the taste of peppers, but doesn't like the heat of peppers, then this one, it's the True Story Organic uh, Chicken, Sriracha Jalapeno Chicken Sausage that uh, we found on imperfect.com. So. And I will put a link down in the comments, so if you want to try Imperfect Foods, you guys can get $10 off your first box. Uh, definitely worth it, in my opinion. So now we're getting ready to toss the eggs in. And there wasn't much eggs. The whole reason why we decided to make this dish was because we had exactly five eggs left over, and we're cooking for five people. And normally, just making each person, like, one fried egg and maybe a sausage or something wouldn't work. So this is a good family meal and it helps use up what was in the kitchen, what was in the fridge. So we let that sit for a second with the lid on to help kind of firm up some of the egg and now you can see it starting to collect on everything. And just make sure that um, when you're cooking, you scrape the bottom of the pan because you don't want anything to burn to it. Hence the reason why it's a metal instrument on a metal pan. Uh, you definitely don't want to do that if you have those Teflon coated ones though, because those suckers will scratch off into your food and you don't want to eat Teflon. Right. And so now we're just adding the leftover soy sauce from one of those stir fry packages. And that'll get squeezed in there and mixed around in just a minute.